Visitors to the National Scouting Museum are greeted by this reproduction of a 1914 recruiting poster hanging in the lobby above the library doors. We'll learn more about this piece of art in this week's edition of Artifact of the Week. In Mount Gilead, Ohio, an abandoned building was slated for demolition. On a third floor wall in a room used by a local Boy Scout troop as their meeting room was a 9 foot by 20 foot recruiting poster mounted to the wall. This poster, it turns out, is what is called lithographic wallpaper. Now lithographic wallpaper is a printing technique used to print large works of art such as murals and billboards. At the time this poster was created, the printing process would likely have been accomplished by creating a limestone-based plate with the original artwork drawn on the surface with an oil-based medium such as a wax crayon. Now lithography uses a simple chemical process to create the image. The positive part of the image is a water-repelling or hydrophobic substance, in this case the wax crayon, while the negative image would be water-retaining or hydrophilic. When the stone plate is introduced to a compatible printing ink and water mixture, the ink will adhere to the positive image and the water will clean the negative part of the image. Just in case you're curious, lithography or stone printing gets its name from the ancient Greek word for stone, lithos. As you can see, the border of the poster shows the merit badges available for scouts to earn at the time. The background image of the poster illustrates many of the exciting activities the BSA offered its members. The image on the left of the poster speaks to the slogan of the BSA, Do a Good Turn Daily, and features a scout assisting an elderly woman across the street. This is a direct reference to the first edition of the Boy Scout Handbook. The image on the right shows a scout standing up for those in need. In this case, a dog being harassed by a group of boys. Now, as I mentioned before, the poster was hanging on the wall of an abandoned building. And in August of 2000, Robert Lodge, a professional fine arts conservationist, Joe Bullen, then a member of the National Scouting Museum staff, and Stephen Fuller, a local volunteer, spent three days very carefully removing and conserving the original poster from the wall. The process they used is interesting. Now, according to the treatment report created to document the removal of the poster, the original poster consisted of four columns consisting of three lithographs each. Each of the four columns consists of two papers measuring approximately 44 by 61 inches and one paper measuring 22 by 61 inches. Now, because of the extremely fragile nature of the lithographic sheets in both the wet and dry states, a scalpel was used to surgically cut the papers to a uniform dimension of 22 by 61 inches. This resulted in 20 final segments that were removed from the wall. The report goes on to describe the removal process method. Several papers were wet with distilled water in advance of the removal work. Several papers were steamed to penetrate moisture in advance of removal of the removal work. Each section to be removed is then thoroughly wet with distilled water until a surface film is formed. Next, the sheet of 5 mil mylar is cut to size and is adhered to the face of the paper with that film of water only acting as an adhesive. Using a thin steel spatula, the lithograph paper was carefully separated from the wallpapers beginning at each end. Then, by very slowly pulling on the mylar, the lithographic papers came away still attached to the mylar. Much work with the spatula was necessary in many locations under the sheets of paper. The removed papers were then placed face down on the floor to dry. When they were dry, they naturally separated from the mylar. Now, the original lithograph sheets are stored in the collections vault here at the museum. And today, this reprint of this historic recruiting poster helps scouts learn about the history of the BSA and gives us a glimpse back into time and the earliest days of the Boy Scouts of America. Well, that's all we have time for today. Join us next week as we explore more of the stories and artifacts of the National Scouting Museum.